Adhamadhava Kunjabihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Jasodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Jasodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Guru Deva, Jaya Guru Deva, Guru Deva, Jaya Guru Deva.
Krishna. Hari Bol, Sankirt, Sri Antariksha Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Vinu Gita Mataji, Hari Bol, Priti Gulati Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, I welcome all the devotees who have come here for the Bhakti Shastri class. Um, uh, today we will be doing the 15th chapter and um, I welcome Sanket, I welcome Shubha Mataji, Lauren, Venugita Mataji, Priti Ulasini Mataji, Aparupa Mataji who just walked in through the door and uh, all the devotees who are online um, who are attending this class, I wholeheartedly welcome. So today we'll do the 15th chapter. <clears throat> but before we start, as usual, we have our Mangalacharan prayers that we'll recite, and then we can get started. <clears throat> Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunathan Vitam Tvam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanvitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubayascha Kripa Sindubya Evacha Patita nam pavane bhyo, Vaishnave bhyo namo namaha. Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Matsamo Nasti Papatma Naparadhi Chakaschana Parihare Pilajame Kimbruve Purushottama Bhumo Skalita Padanam Bhumireva Valambanam Tvai jata paradhanam, Mame vasharanam prabhu, Govinda vallabhe radhe, Prarthayetvam hamsada, Tvadiyam niti janatu, Govindo maam tvayasaha, Bhajami radha maravinda netram, Smarami radha madurasmitasyam, Vadami Radham Karuna Bharadram Tato Mamanyasti Gatirna Kapi Radha Radhita Radhesha Radhika Prana Vallabha Radha Ramana Vandetvam Radhika Prema Nirjita Hare Krishna
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Vijit. Thank you for joining. Hare well. So today we do the 15th chapter. So um, let's go to the last purport just for the beginning. Sometimes, as we know, that we go to the last purport. So that will be 15th chapter and 20th verse. So we'll read the purport a little bit and then we can uh, come back. Because there, uh, Srila Prabhupada just summarizes uh, the whole chapter. So when we read that purport, then we can get a little bit of insight into this chapter. <clears throat> purport. The Lord clearly explains here that this is the substance of all revealed scriptures. And one should understand this as it is given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus one will become intelligent and perfect in transcendental knowledge. In other words, by understanding this philosophy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engaging in his transcendental service, everyone can become freed from all contaminations of the modes of material nature. Devotional service is a process of spiritual understanding. Wherever devotional service exists, the material contamination cannot coexist. Devotional service to the Lord and the Lord Himself are one and the same because they are spiritual. Devotional service takes place within the internal energy of the Supreme Lord. The Lord is said to be the sun and ignorance is called darkness. Where the sun is present, there is no question of darkness. Therefore, whenever devotional service is present under the proper guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, there is no question of ignorance. Everyone must take to this consciousness of Krishna and engage in devotional service to become intelligent and purified. Unless one comes to this position of understanding Krishna and engages in devotional service, however intelligent he may be in estimation of some common man, he is not perfectly intelligent. The word anagha by which Arjuna is addressed is significant. Anagha, O sinless one, means that unless one is freed from all sinful reactions, it's very difficult to understand Krishna. One has to become free from all contamination all sinful activities, then he can understand. But devotional service is so pure and potent that once one is engaged in the devotional service, he automatically comes to the stage of sinlessness. While one is performing devotional service in association of pure devotees in full Krishna consciousness, there are certain things which require to be vanquished altogether. The most important thing is one has to surmount the, is the weakness of the heart. The first fall down is caused by the desire to lord it over the material nature. Thus one gives up the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord. The second weakness of the heart is that as one increases the propensity to lord it over material nature, he becomes attached to matter and the possession of matter. The problems of material existence are due to this weakness of heart. In this chapter, the first five verses describe the process of freeing oneself from these weaknesses of heart and the rest of the chapter from sixth verse to the end discusses Purushottam Yoga. So in the last, Srila Prabhupada says that for the first five verses, actually Krishna talks about these weaknesses of heart and in the last few verses, um, Krishna talks about himself, which is called the Prishottam Yoga. So kindly repeat. <clears throat> Fifteen dot one. Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Urdhvamula Madhashakam. Ashvatam Prahura Vyayam. Chandam siyasya parnani Yastam veda saveda ved Shruba Matiji, please start the translations. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, 
It is said that there is an imperishable banyan tree that has its root upward and its branches down, and who, whose leaves are the Vedic hymns. One who knows this tree is known, knower, uh, one who knows the tree is the knower of the Vedas. Thank you. In the last chapter, in the 14th chapter, Krishna talked about the modes of material nature. They were, as you call, deep, drill down details of material existence. How the modes are acting, what are the modes, what are the results of being attached to various modes. But Krishna is now taking us up 30 feet, 30,000 feet above the ground. And he is telling about this material nature. He is saying that this material nature is like a banyan tree. And this banyan tree has its roots upwards and its branches down and whose leaves are the Vedic hymns. Now, you know, banyan tree, for those who have seen, most of us have seen in India, you know, the branches also can have roots. So if you have a huge banyan tree, it's practically impossible to know where the original or root was situated. And, you know, pr practically it is, you'll get lost in the maze trying to find if that is the case of a simple banyan tree, then what is the nature of this material world, which is so complex, which is so hard to understand? Um, and then, but then he says, Krishna says is that who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas. This particular chapter, Krishna is emphasizing two or three times Vedavit. So he uses the word Vedavit here. He says that those who know this banyan tree, they know the Vedas. Um, let's see if there are any other points in the purport that we can um, <coughs> go through. The other point Srila Prabhupada writes is that um, roots upwards, banyan tree with roots upwards. So he says in this material world, so let's read that, that's a beautiful part. Um, if you can take to the now, the word N-O-W, yeah, if you see the last line there, thank you. Now, there is no ready experience in this world of a tree situated with, it, with its branches down and its roots upward, but there is such a thing, that tree can be found beside a reservoir of water. We can see the trees on the bank reflect upon the water with their branches down and roots upward. In other words, the tree of this material world is only a reflection and of the tree of the spiritual world. The, this reflection of spiritual world is situated on desire, just as tree's reflection is situated on water. Desire is the cause of things being situated in this reflected material light. One who wants to get out of this material existence must know this tree thoroughly through analytical study then he can cut off his relationship with it. So here we can see how um, in, on the bank of the river, when you see the tree, you will see that the branches are downward and the roots are upward. The nature of this material world is such that it comes from Krishna and from, so the root seems to be coming from Krishna and the roots are downward and the branches are upward. So the analytical study means that at least when one involves in knowing the nature of this world and how complicated it is, then you can get more impetus to leave it. That's one explanation. The second explanation is the last six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, they are dealing with Jnana Yoga or the analytical study of material nature. So part of that series Krishna is also mentioning here. Second verse, please. So, w one way you can also understand is that this material world, it seems real to the conditioned soul, but from Krishna's perspective, it is just a reflection. This is not something real. In fact, in Krishna says in the first of the Chatushloki Bhagavatam 2.9.33, is that, Ritertam yat pratiyeta he says that, O Brahma, whatever you see in this world, if it appears independent of me, and if you don't see in me in that, then it has no value. 
it, so in the darkness, if you see, um, it's like the reflection of light in the darkness. So the example is that if a person is in the cave, you know, or if the person is in a very, um, I remember when there is there was growing up, we used to go to the temple of um, yeah, our family deity, and. In those days, when I was like, I don't know, seven, eight, in those days there was no light in the temple. So, it, right from the outside all the way to the Sanctum Sanctorum, eh, about maybe 100, 150, 200 feet, there was no light at all. So, as kids we used to play fun, we used to take a broken piece of mirror and then we used to stand outside and then we used to adjust the mirror so that the sun reflection would go and fall into it and then we would kind of have some fun like that. The, the idea is that the material world is like that reflection of sun in the darkness. And it, it, it really doesn't kind of, it's not the actual thing. When you are trying to, for example, use that sun to heat yourself or you know, keep yourself warm, that you are cold inside. It, it's not true substance because it doesn't give the same effect as the sun. So similarly, this material world is such, it's a reflection of spiritual world and that's what is Krishna is trying to tell here. Yes, Avijit Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. So, um, is this analogy uh, like a hundred percent analogy because um, I have a question. So in, in our material world, when you see a reflection, then the, when the original thing moves, then the reflection also moves exactly the same way. So all the movements that are happening in this material world, which are considered reflection, are they really truly reflection of the things happening in the spiritual world or uh, is this analogy 100% or is it like a reflection from the just standpoint of a more like a philosophical question? Like, you know, there are some activities there and then therefore you see activities here. Is it more like that? <coughs> yes and no. The reason is, um, one of your questions you said is that the reflection moves exactly according to the object that is being reflected upon. Now. Imagine the same situation where on the bank of the river there is the tree, right? And that is being reflected in the water. Now when there is like some strong wind, the reflection in the water moves pretty fast compared to the tree that doesn't move that much. So similarly, the soul or the spiritual nature that exists in the material world apparently seems to be moving by the modes of material nature but internally I am not moving because I am thinking myself as the body I am being um, subject to the movement of material nature but as a spirit soul from within I am just being observing that's you know the things are moving I don't so that that analogy has some kind of you know uh, caveats that spirit because if material world is moving at this pace then the spiritual world also should move at that pace or it should be similar it not exactly similar there is some dissimilarity and regarding this as being an analogy it is an analogy but at the same time it is true also because if you compare the world then it does appear like a tree so for example um, the, the constellation, uh, you know, for example, can have different shapes of the animals, uh, but they are analogy or representation, but at the same time they are representation also. There is some truth in that. So, for example, yesterday we were reading in that seminar or learning to the seminar that it's an inverted dolphin tail. The very cosmos. It's an inverted dolphin tail. It's a Shumara planet. It means it, it's a representation of a dolphin, but at the same time, it's not a dolphin. Dolphin. So similarly, this material world is like a banyan tree, in the sense in its content it can be compared to. But it is not like if you look. Probably, if you become liberated and really go back to spiritual world, and while going back to the spiritual world, you don't see this whole material world as a banyan tree. It makes sense. Okay. Text 2. 
अदस्चोर्द प्रश्रुता शाखा गुणा प्रवृद्धा विषया प्रवाल अदस्च मूल्यानुशंतता कर्माणुबंधी मनुष्यलोके Translation: The branches of this tree extend downward and upward, nourished by the three modes of material nature. The twigs are the objects of the senses. This tree also has roots growing down, and these are bound to the fruitive actions of human society. Should we read the purport a little bit? In case it's too confusing, what do you think? We have twenty verses in this chapter, so. Um, one purport is for sure we'll read, but okay, let's read the purport. It's a small purport. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The description of the banyan tree is further explained here. Its branches spread in all directions. In the lower parts, there are variegated manifestations of material of living entities, human beings, animals, horses, cows, dogs, cats, etc. These are situated on the lower parts of the branches. whereas in the upper parts are the higher forms of living entities the demigods gandharvas and many other higher species of life as a tree is nourished by water so this tree is nourished by the three modes of material nature sometimes we find that a tract of land is barren for want of sufficient water and sometimes a tract is very green similarly where particular modes of material nature are proportionally greater in quantity the different species of life are manifested accordingly the so here shila prabhupada is saying in the branches are higher and lower so in the higher branches there are demigods in the lower branches there are animal species and the twigs which are growing from the branches they are considered to be the sense objects because the demigods maybe they don't like the kind of halwa that we make here there must be very high quality high fine thing ours must be like yes <laughs> or so they are situated there the twigs or the sense objects for them has to be equally correspondingly better so at least in this kali yuga it's even atrocious but let's not <laughs> the twigs of the tree are considered to be the sense objects by development of the different modes of nature we develop different senses and by the senses we enjoy different varieties of sense objects the tips of the branches are the senses the ears nose eyes etc which are attached to the enjoyment of different sense objects the twigs are the sound form touch and so on the sense objects the subsidiary roots are attachment and aversions which are the by products of different varieties of sense sense object sorry okay sense enjoyment okay different varieties of suffering and sense enjoyment the tendencies towards piety and impiety are considered to develop from these secondary roots which spread in all directions the real root is from brahmaloka and the other roots are in the human planetary systems after one enjoys the results of virtuous activities in the upper planetary systems he comes down to this earth and renews his karma or the fruitive activities for promotion this planet of human beings is considered to be the field of activities so um this this clear you know so the twigs that are coming out so this is krishna is using the analogy um where he says the twigs are sense objects and where the branches are you know the planetary systems and so on and so forth yes venadhari prabhu through in the first verse it is said this uh, whose leaves are the vedic hymns right uh and it says the branches go are down and roots are upward here it says even the branches go up and the roots come down roots bo- go both ways so is it the same tree i mean like the first verse and second verse is referring to the same yes tree. and you told uh, uh but how how is that the twigs are sense object but the leaves are vedic hymns because the through performance of vedic austerities you will get to enjoy so the 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 
by performing the Vedic activities, you can enjoy the sense objects, strictly speaking. In the modern context, it's, it is not, um, how do you say, not used in that context. But in the previous times, if you really wanted to enjoy, or if you wanted to reduce sinful reactions, you had to perform the Vedic sacrifices. Okay, but uh, also you were referring to, uh, in the first verse while you were explaining, you were referring that the root is Krishna of the tree. The, the root from, or the place from which the root comes is Krishna. It's strictly speaking, it's not even Krishna. Krishna, Garo, Dakshai, Vishnu, then it comes Brahman, Mahatattva, and then it goes. But, you know, for simplicity's sake, we just said Krishna. Okay. So, because he says, Krishna says that, uh, the, the Brahman or Mahatva, Mahatattva is the cause of all material ingredients. And into that Mah Brahman or Mahatattva I impregnate. So, so from that Brahman the material nature comes about. You know, in, in the, in the um, unmanifested state it is Pradhan. And in the manifested state that we see now is Prakriti. And then some, and that, that's where it comes about. Now, if you try to see this material world, from where did this come from, it is impossible. Even to know just our solar system, you know, it's impossible to know. Then what can you talk of multiple universes and how they are, they are bunched together? So, is it like the Garbhodakshay Vishnu is the root kind? K kind of. But the, here, we'll hold on to that thought. We'll do one more, two more verses and then we'll, we'll talk about that. Because, you know, it's a very genuine question. And Krishna is also giving answer to that. All right. Text number three and four. Narupamasya hatathopalabhyate Nanto na chadir na chasampratishta Ashwatthamenam suvirudhamulam Asanga shastrena dridhena chitva Tatapadam tat parimargitavyam Yasmin gatana nivartanti bhuyaha Tameva chadyam purusham prapadye Yatha pravritti prashrita purani Translation the real form of this tree cannot be perceived in this world. No one can understand where it ends, where it begins, or where its foundation is. But with determination, one must cut down this strongly rooted tree with the weapons of detachment. Therefore, one must seek that place from which, having gone, one never returns, and therefore surrender to that personality of Godhead, from whom everything begins, and from whom everything has extended since time immemorial. Thank you. So here Krishna says that you really cannot seriously perceive because we are trying to visualize this tree with roots upwards and downward. Krishna says you really cannot perceive the exact form of this tree in material world. In fact, Srila Prabhupada's purport, just read, let's read the first paragraph. It is now clearly stated that the real form of this banyan tree cannot be understood in this material world. Since the root is upward, the extension of the real tree is at the other end. When entangled with the material expansions of the tree, one cannot see how far the tree extends, nor can one see the beginning of this tree. Yet one has to find out the cause. I am the son of my father, my father is the son of such and such a person, etc. By searching in this way, one comes to Brahma, who is generated by the Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu. Finally, in this way, when one searches, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that is the end of research work. One has to search out for the origin of this tree, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, through the association of persons who are in knowledge of that mm. origin of this tree, the, 
the supreme personality of godhead yes through the associations of persons who are in knowledge of the supreme personality of godhead then by understanding one becomes gradually detached from this false reflection of reality and by knowledge one can cut off the connection and actually become situated in the real tree so you know the branches are going upward and downward and then the twigs are the sense object the leaves are the vedic hymns so you know these are allegorical representation at the same time the fact is that it is hard to perceive then how it is so um, but krishna is saying that even if you can't understand this tree completely in truth but you have you should be strongly determined to cut it off and go to that place where you can never come back again venadari prabhu questions uh, in the, in the purport to uh, second verse uh, uh, in the purport it said the brahma is the root of the tree and then here uh, i think it answers my question that uh, garbhodakshi is root of brahma brahma yeah because see here krishna is always dual role i am in this material world i am not in this material world so who is actually in the material world then that is brahma so, but indirectly he has to be there without him brahma won't exist so it's it's always krishna is like i am there but i am not there without me this doesn't work though that is what he clearly says okay thank you text 5 so in the first four verses krishna actually explains how strong is this material world which is in the form of a banyan tree and in the fifth verse actually he explains how how to you know what are the qualifications needed to detach text 5 nirmana moha jita sanga dosha अध्यात्मनिवृत्तकाय त those who are free from false prestige illusion and false association who understand the eternal who are done with material lust and who are freed from the dualities of happiness and distress and who unbewildered know how to surrender under the supreme person attain to that eternal kingdom thank you It's a nice purport. Text six. In in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna does not shed much light on his kingdom or his place. It's very very you know very very few places he mentions about his. And one of the verses is the next verse. But Brahma Samhita says you know, chinta mani prakara sadma shukal puriksha laksha. It's like you know every stone. or every pebble is like a touchstone and then every gate is a dance and then every word is a song so it's very more descriptive bhagavad gita krishna is like very very like you know oblique he, if that few places only he talks about it but if that he is very oblique <clears throat> text 6 na tad bhashayate suryo न शशाको न पावक यद्वान्वर्तंते तम परम मम द दैट सुप्रीम अबोर्ड ऑफ माइंड इज नॉट इल्यूमिन बाय द सन और मून नॉट बाय फायर और इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दोज हु रीच एट never return to this material world thank you so um okay let's read uh, let's read the first paragraph of the purport the spiritual world the abode of the supreme personality of god at krishna which is known as krishna loka golok vrindavan is described here 
In the spiritual sky, there is no need of sunshine, moonshine, fire or electricity because all the planets are self-luminous. We have only one planet in this universe, the sun, which is self-luminous, but all the planets in the spiritual sky are called self-luminous. The shining effulgence of all those planets, called Vaikuntas, constitute the shining sky known as Brahma Jyoti. Actually, the effulgence is emanating from the planet of Krishna, Golok Vrindavan. Part of that shining effulgence is covered by Mahatattva, the material world. Other than this, the major portion of that shining sky is full of spiritual planets called Vaikuntas, chief of which is Golok Vrindavan. Um, and Srila Prabhupada writes in the third paragraph, one should be captivated by this information, the first line. So we should have that like thirst, oh, what does Krishna do? You know, what is the spiritual world? Why is it so exciting? And why do we have to come back? Uh, or why do we have to go there and not ever come back here? So that should be like really captivating. That should like be an obsession. Like why this nature of this material world and why as a spirit soul, what am I doing loitering here? You know, it's like such a hard struggle here. Why not go back to the spiritual world? That should be the, the idea. Uh, yes, Ankit, having, yeah, go ahead. Prabhu, it say, said here, those who reach it, uh, those who reach it never return to this material world. We are already there, right? We are already there means? We were already there. Okay, we will talk about it. <laughs> no worries. Because um, <clears throat> it's a good point that you raised. Let's, um, you hold that thought, we'll definitely come to that particular question. In fact, we'll spend the next course reading about that. Text 7. Kindly repeat after me. Mamai vam sho jiva loke. Jiva bhuta sanatanaha. Manashashtan indriyani. Prakritisthani karshati. The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to the conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with, with the six senses, which, is, which include the mind. So, let's read the purport. It's a little big purport, but we'll spend some time discussing this purport today. <clears throat> In this verse, the living entity, the identity of living entity is clearly revealed. The living entity is the fragmental part and parcel of the Supreme Lord eternally. Because Krishna says, Sanatana. Sanatana means eternal. Mamai Vamsho Jiva, Mamai Vamsho Jiva Loke. Actually, can you help them to give Charnamrit from here? It's, it's here. Please. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. There's there. Charnamrit is right there. Please take it. In this verse, the identity of the living being is clearly given. The living entity is the fragmental part and parcel of the Supreme Lord eternally. It is not that he assumes individuality in his conditional life and in his liberated state he becomes one with the Supreme Lord. He is eternally fragmented. This is one of the things. Mamai vam sho jiva loke. Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. Krishna says, they are eternally my fragmental parts. It's not that we become, when we are in the conditioned state, yes, we are distinct from God. But when we are liberated, merge. It is not that he assumes individuality in his conditioned life and in his liberated state becomes one with Lord. <coughs> he is eternally fragmented. It is clearly stated Sanatanaha. According to the Vedic version, the Supreme Lord manifests and expands himself in innumerable expansions, of which the primary expansion are called Vishnu Tattvas and the secondary expansions are called the living entities. So are we expansions of the Supreme God? Excellent. We are also expansions. Everything comes from Krishna. There is nothing beyond Krishna. We are also expansions, but our expansion is not same as his expansions. That is where the confusion begins. 
in other words the vishnu tatva is the personal expansion and the living entities are the separated expansions we are expansions but we are not in the internal and the same as as lord vishnu by his personal expansion he is manifested in various forms like lord rama narsimha dev vishnu murti and all the predominating deities in the vaikuntha planets the separated expansions the living entities are eternally servitors the personal expansions of the supreme personality of godhead the individual in- identities of the godhead are always present similarly the separated expansions of the living entities have their identities as fragmental part and parcels of the supreme lord the living entities also have fragmental portions of his qualities of which independence is one so see the point you know was narsimha dev a manufactured incarnation of the supreme personality of godhead or did he eternally exist so they eternally exist so when his own internal expansions eternally exist we as living entities also eternally exist that's the that's the point though we are separated but we are still the expansions of the supreme lord and though we eternally exist and because he has independence can't we have independence but his independence is infinite and ours is and that's what shri prabhupada is trying to say every living entity as an individual soul has his personal individuality and a minute form of independence by so please mark this word any time it's very important by misuse of that independence one becomes a conditioned soul and by the proper use of independence he is always liberated if anybody asks why did you fall into this material world only four words that's what prabhupada writes here and in bhagavatam misuse of minute independence period i have independence but very very tiny and i misuse it and there is a because i am a ex- separated expansion of krishna i am not a robot the i am not a preprogrammed robot that i have no capacity to think no capacity to have some independence and krishna is saying if you want to be independent please come to this material world and be independent because you don't want me to be in picture then i provide you this material world so now the question again is you know did we fall from the spiritual world or were we present here eternally you know again that's a question which you know, we can't find answer to we discussed in the previous classes he shri prabhupada himself says you know it's better to ask krishna nobody can give you answer to that question it is impossible to get an answer and it's better to go back to krishna and if you are still having that burning desire because you are independent and you can still keep that desire within the core of your heart you can go back but the chances are you just are absorbed in krishna you will forget all that you are so enthralled with krishna that you just found him somehow or other and that's it that 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 is your soul is so full in joy you just forget it and then the the the, the you will turn around and say to krishna i don't care place me in this material world place me in spiritual world bas let me be engaged in your service you now punascha bhuya bhagavatyanante rati so let's look up one let's all sing together that's a beautiful prayer mm, 6th canto 11th chapter 28th verse 27 please maybe there are only 27 i don't know hey what do you know okay kindly repeat after me so this to give a small context this is prayers by vritrasura vritrasura was maharaj king chitraketu in his previous life and he attained to such exalted position in devotional service that he, he actually had darshan of lord shankarshan ananta dev and he was in a very high state of devotion on the platform of bhav and one day it so happened that he passed some comment against lord shiva and parvati you know that's a story if you want me to tell me i'll tell now but i can do it later but he passed some comment and he was cursed by mother parvati and in the next life he became ritrasura and here is he is about to be killed by indra and these are his prayers that he is offering 
I mean, these 27, 26, 25, 24, they are incredible prayers, worth, you know, really like, you know, internalizing them. Um, this is the last of those. He was Chitra Ketu, he had divine darshan of Ananta Dev, and he was cursed to become Vritrasura. And then now he is saying, this is what he is saying. Mamottama shloka janeshu sakhyam Samsara chakre brahmata svakarma bhi Tvan mayayatma atma jadara geheshu Asakta chittasya nanatha bhūya Translation O oh my Lord, O oh my Master, I am wandering throughout this material world as a result of my fruitive activities. Therefore, I simply seek friendship in association of your pious and enlightened devotees. My attachment to my body, wife, children and home is continuing by the spell of your external energy. But I wish to be attached to them no longer. Let my mind be conscious. Let my mind, my consciousness and everything I have be attached, attached to you. So after a stage in devotional service, you really are not worried. Where is Krishna going to place me? You are so uh, absorbed in thoughts of Krishna that Narayana Paras, Narayana Parasarve Nakutaschana Vibhyati. So, in fact, this, this, um, that verse itself, it comes in the, um, in the story of Ritrasura. When Ritrasura, so here is the story. If you permit me, I'll tell. So, when Chitra Ketu became really um, famous and he got the darshan of Lord Anantadev, he was going throughout the universe in the plane and he was traveling with his associates. He was traveling over Mount Kailash and he saw there a very wonderful sight. He saw that Lord Shiva was sitting and discussing the philosophical topics with the great sages like Narada and you know, exalted sages. That was all wonderful, but except uh, on his left lap was Mother Parvati, left or right. There is a specific order there. Because right is reserved for daughter, left is reserved for wife. So I forget which is which. In any case, so on his lap was Mother Parvati. And then Chitraketu Maharaj said, look at this. You know, Lord Shiva is having left. Thank you. So look at Lord Shiva. He is sitting and you know talking to all these saints, but Mother Parvati is sitting on his lap, and it's his. And then Acharya say he never meant to denigrate Lord Shiva. In fact, it was a praise of Lord Shiva. Look at his steadiness. That, you know, it's he is giving class even though Mother Parvati is you know sitting on his lap. He's so undisturbed. He's dhira. But Mother Parvati understood, misunderstood, and she cursed him. You dare criticize our character and our behavior when even the lords of the universe like Brahma and others come and take dust from the lotus feet of Lord Shiva. I curse you to be a demon in your next life. Then the reaction of Chitraketu Maharaj at that time was very, very wonderful. He neither felt disturbed nor he felt angry, nor he felt guilty too. He came and he prayed, O Mother, you have cursed me for something I have not done or for no fault of mine, but I will accept your curse and thank you. And he moves on. And Mother Parvati is like, what happened here? I cursed him to be a demon and you know, he, he is like, he is not disturbed. Then Lord Shiva says in that connection, Narayana Parasarve Nakutaschana Bhyati. He says that, O oh Parvati, the devotees of Lord Sh- Narayan are so exalted that he, they are not afraid of any situation, be they in hell or heaven or you know, they are in the liberated state. 
and then here also he is saying that you know my karma will take me through wherever of the universe you know brahmatam so karma bhi i can keep on brahmatam means rotating around or wandering around this material world through my own karmic activities but this is what i ask please give me the protection vritrasura he doesn't say okay lord once you have cursed me i paid my fine and my dues and my penalties now you should take me back so, no no please wherever i go now the theme is that you know it's the, we we read that verse punascha bhoya bhagavate nante maharaj parikshit it's 11916 or let's not read that but the same same theme that wherever i am where am i am going please give me your devotion service i don't mind wherever you put me so the idea is at after one stage material or spiritual it really doesn't matter even hell for a devotee is is, is not like you know ours because you see everything as part and parcel of krishna So, thank lo- you bro thank you so we are after pure devotional service to krishna and we realize that once we get it you know no matter what that is and krishna will krishna is not unkind he is the most kindest is the most um sensitive of all personalities it is said that the lord will look for a sesame seed of good quality in the ocean of faults that abound us he is seeking that one sesame seed of good quality and that's what he is going to count he is going to neglect if he wants to look for the faults in us there is no end to it <laughs> he is the, he, he is all present at all times <laughs> and he knows in and out he, he knows our deepest things you cannot hide from him if he wants to do that he'll never be perfect he'll be forever stuck in the material world but the krishna is opposite he is saying i will look for that single sesame seed of good quality in the ocean of faults and he accepts that that bhava grahi janardana in that that's our great hope otherwise you know let's not waste our time in devotional service we'll never be successful but i will stay in the material world god god is saying unless you are 100% perfect and according to me 100% perfect you can't even get 1% perfect so it's a mismatch not going to happen but krishna is so encouraging he says just come to me i'll protect you you know in 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 12th chapter we read if you cannot fix your mind upon me then follow regulate if you cannot follow regulate principles then work for me if you not so compassionate saying come back to me i know we can, we all yes, shruma mantri ji then why why is he not getting us back Mate, you have to speak in the mic. Everybody wants to hear your voice on the online also. So yes, in the same context, like you just said a few minutes back, the, because we are here because of our minute misuse of minute mistakes. So why, um, why, why Krishna did not yeah, forgive us? Yeah, why he why he gave us such a big punishment in that case? Why he was like because he, because we asked for it. He, he, unless see. so the here is thing krishna says um bhuktaram yagna tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhrudam sarva bhutanam gnyatva mam shantirichati in the fifth chapter 29th word he says that the third line is suhrudam sarva bhutanam means i am the well-wisher of all the living entities if he is the well-wisher would you actually put he would he put us in this material world unless we were really determined to come he would make his best to avoid us fall in this material world but we had in us saying that i really want to go and krishna knowing our heart he said okay you know if you, if you have that stage then i will because he is not going to hold you back oh because he, you know the idea is that if you hold back I, no matter what i'm not sending you <laughs> stay here uh, there, there is no independence there is no voluntary uh, service so krishna will again you should go back to krishna ask him why you know why was i given this big a punishment for what come mistake i committed otherwise i can't tell you you can't nobody will tell you even brahma can't tell you because if you came to this material world before brahma then he will say i, I don't know even i was not born when you came to this material world <laughs> makes sense right for so for example Brahma's lifetime is now 50 years. He is right now 50 years. First day after 50 years, Brahma Murta time. It means not uh, Rajbog time. 
it's where brahma's life span is right now so if you are born came to this material before brahma came then even brahma will say i don't know you came here before i came we are all this journey going on in this material world so it's better to ask him it's uh, lauren and then sanket and then priti vilasini mataji lauren uh just a question i heard that uh, brahma was the first uh, living entity that manifested in this material universe yes sir but before brahma there were quite innumerable number of times this material universe was created and destroyed so um so brahma's life is now 50 years after 50 years there will be complete devastation the material nature will be completely taken back so there are four types of devastation according to bhagavatam one is the devastation that happens at the end of brahma's life one is the devastation that happens at the end of brahma's day one is the devastation that happens during the change of manus i don't remember the fourth there are sanskrit names also if you want to look it up it's in 12th canto when material nature is destroyed at the end of brahma's life there is no material nature material nature is completely the ingredients and everything is sucked up and even the mahatatva that is covering is gone and only krishna remains but later when krishna has this desire okay you know there are conditioned souls who still want to enjoy for them okay i'll create so this is this process and then brahma comes so when he creates the material nature then the brahma comes then when brahma comes then again the whole thing starts and this has been going on since time immemorial there have been millions and quadrillions of brahma before this brahma is a jiva is a post you and me can become brahma for this particular duration of this universe uh, so that that's how in nutshell it is so you know i could i i could have been in the previous brahma so brahma is like a post the president of united states for example is a post it can be occupied by any person fortunately or unfortunately <laughs> so so brahma is a post i could have been uh, yeah so you get the idea thank you so let's say we misused independence once but mm-hmm. according to the previous words we won't misuse it again nope we learn our lesson pretty good okay. <laughs> <laughs> because the tendency is always there right no Nandaji. no there can be accidental and um, guaranteed fall down like jay vijay it's a special case where they fell down from their position but it was sometime it was uh, orchestrated by krishna so that he wanted you know to have some sporting pastimes he really wanted somebody to fight with priti vilasini mati so this is actually a comment and uh, this is about the free will and the minute independence which i just heard from a devotee so uh, w- when we use our free will and um, our minute independence and we come to this material world whatever we are using in this material world is nothing but the, what the what belongs to the lord everything that we have here right from the water we drink or the food we eat everything is provided by the lord the only thing that is he has given us specially is this little independence or free will so all that krishna is telling us is that you have everything you're using is what is mine but the only extra thing i've given you is this free will so with your free will just surrender to me that's the only thing i'm asking from you yes. so i just heard this Ex- from a devotee excellent yeah that's and it. that's how we can use it and we can go back so wonderful in in fact he doesn't even he not only gives us food but he does more than that and we can mataji needs the oh she has the chip. okay that's good no 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 it's fine should we continue yes all right <clears throat> did we complete the purport no where were we ah in either case thank you venidari prabhu in either case he is qualitatively eternal as the supreme lord is in his eternal in his liberated state he is freed from this material condition and he is under the engagement of transcendental service unto the lord in his conditioned life he is dominated by material modes of nature and he forgets the transcendental loving service <coughs> of the lord as a result he has to struggle very hard to maintain his existence in the material world the living entities not only the human beings 
and the cats and the dogs, but even the greater controllers of material world, Brahma, Lord Shiva and even Vishnu are all part and parcels of the Supreme Lord. They are all eternal, not temporary manifestations. The word karshati, struggling or grappling hard, is very significant. The conditioned soul is bound up as though shackled by iron chains. He is bound up by the false ego and the mind is the chief agent which is driving him in this material existence. When the mind is in the mode of goodness, his activities are good. When the mind is in the mode of passion, his activities are troublesome. And when the mind is in the mode of ignorance, he travels in the lower species of life. It is clear, however, in this verse that the conditioned soul is covered by the material body with mind and senses. And he, and when he is liberated, this material covering perishes, but his spiritual body manifests itself in its individual capacity. The following is the inf- following information is there in the Madhya Madhyandinaya Shruti. <clears throat> Savaesha Brahmanishta idam shariram martyam atisrijya brahma bhishta sampadya brahmana pashyati brahmana shrinoti brahmana Brahmana Naivedam Sarvam Anubhavati It is stated here that when a living entity gives up this material embodiment and enters into spiritual world, he revives his spiritual body and in his spiritual body he can see the Supreme Personality of God at face to face. So here, you know, this, these are beautiful things that are mentioned here about how you know one goes back home, back to Godhead. <coughs> and... Um, the other point is that in the second chapter, Krishna said that the soul is unchangeable. Means I am Jiva, but I am unchangeable. Um, uh, he says, Achaloyam Adahyoyam Avikaryoyam Uchyate. Avikaryam means unchangeable. So, when I am the fragmental part and parcel of God, it doesn't mean that I have been chopped off from the portion of God. Like you take the lump of a cheese. And then, you know, you take, shred it off or any cabbage or whatever. So it's not like, you know, God is a cabbage or cheese that we can, we come out like part and parcels of cheese and God is not left. We are eternally part and parcels of Krishna um, and we are always separated. Krishna is full in himself. So um, this is the word, you know, amsha. You know, my, my conditioned particles, but, but they are not changing. Because if Krishna can be chopped up like cabbage, then which means it's changeable. Because you take the cabbage and then you chop it up, the cabbage as doesn't exist anymore. Only the parts exist. So similarly, it's not that comparison is incorrect. Good questions, comments, concerns? We can go to the next verse. <coughs> Next few verses actually Krishna says that how the transmigration happens. Shariram Yadavapnoti Yachaputkramati Shwaraha. So Chapi and Utkrama is one word, so you you combine it almost yet. Chaput Kramati Shwaraha Krihitvaitani Samyati Vayur Gandhani Vashaya The living entity in the material world carries his different conception of life from one body to another as the air carries aromas. Thus, he takes one kind of body and again quits it to take another. So here Srila Prabhupada explains, the air is pure, air has no smell, air has no specific quality of smell and the air is pure but it passes over the rose and you get the smell of the rose. But it passes over a, a, a very abominable matter, then you get the smell of abominable matter. So the so the living entity, the modes it associates with, then that particular kind of body it, it gets. So in that sense, you have some independence. Here, Krishna is saying it depends on you 
whether you want to cultivate mode of goodness or mode of passion or mode of ignorance and thus you'll get a kind of body. The return of investment of being Krishna conscious is that, you know, we're guaranteed to get at least a human body in the next life. Because our activities are mainly in the mode of goodness. And if, if, if some of us have very strong desires to actually enjoy spiritual life or go to heavenly planets, Krishna will say, no problems, I'll take care of it. So, next verse, <clears throat> in the same theme. Shrotram Chakshu Sparshanam Cha Prasanam Grahanam Eva Cha Adishtaya Manas Chayam Vishayanupasevate The living entity thus taking another gross body obtains a certain type of ear, eye, tongue, nose and sense of touch which are grouped about the mind. He thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects. So if one is accustomed to you know, eating anything and everything, Krishna says you get the body of a hog because you know, and then in the body of a hog even the most abominable things seem supremely relishable. It's just, if you see, they're, they're, they really enjoy. It's not like they are like putting a frowning face and especially, I'm talking about pigs and their breakfast and lunch and dinner in India, especially in the villages. <clears throat> they really seem to enjoy. It's not like they are like disgusted. Krishna is saying, because you have that mentality, I'll give you the body suitable so that you can actually enjoy. That's why you see in this material world, for some people, especially food goes, some people really are disgusted with, with some foods and the others seem to be tremendously enjoying it. <laughs> it seems um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur, he was preaching and he led a preaching party to, to Burma, uh, Myanmar, modern country. And there people are eating, accustomed to eating, you know, so many different things. Uh, and then they started cooking prashadam for the program and they started cooking in ghee and when the local people when they start smelling ghee they started vomiting that was like it was so abominable and disgusting that they couldn't take it so because they are in the modes of you know some different modes what is in the mode of goodness is really truly abominable for those you know it's natural it's so easily perceivable um, <laughs> and in some Countries I don't want to name, uh, especially which are close to the North Pole, <clears throat> and uh, their their um, delicacies and and favorites are something that you can't even think of. Uh, but you know they they do that. You know it seems that um, one of them is uh, because they have shark and other fishes. They catch the shark, they cut it up. They put it in ammonia or some vinegar for six months and they hang it to dry for six months and by the time it comes out it's... Anyways, let's not get into the details because soon we'll have prashadam. <laughs> but the point here is because you have certain modes of material nature, Krishna is facilitating you, putting you in such a place where you can enjoy your uh, modes that you have acquired with. So in that sense, he's very merciful. He's saying, okay, you, because people might complain, oh, God is giving the person a body of a deer or an animal. Actually, it is his mercy. Because if you are very accustomed to eating, you know, practically non-vegetarian every single day, in human form of life, you have severe karmic reactions for doing that. Krishna is mercifully saying, I'll give you the body of a tiger. Please enjoy at least you don't have karmic reaction. So he's very merciful in that sense. So it's hard, because his mercy is hard to, to kind of distinguish. You will think that it is cruel, but it's not. He's perfectly arranging uh, according to. So we, it's up to us, as Mataji said, it's up to us to use our independence to go back. Yes, Abhijit Prabhu. I was just uh, trying to add to that. The comment is, and in those species, they don't even have doubt, hmm? basically. <laughs> 
in yeah. human form you have that doubt right i mean someone or you hear from someone and you get doubt right <laughs> in those forms you don't even have doubt basically you just no. simply enjoy that's yes. it yes you don't have to earn a phd and go to college and maintain an apartment and mortgages and refrigerator cooking stuff is just no <laughs> marriage divorce alimony nothing I, it's not a nice life animal life is krishna is, is it's a very horrible life very horrible life cuz um you live in such constant fear it's it's such constant anxiety that you you kill something to eat 20 different animals will attack you or kill you to eat and there is no it's a law of jungle you are constantly afraid who's going to steal my meat and you just do that and then you can be the food or for another animal jeevo jeev it's a very very tough life and you can't the the worst tragedy is that you can never think of krishna you can never even come to that spiritual realization oh my god you know this is not the place I'm completely covered so that's why human form of life is so rare and valuable that at, at least you have that facility to know okay where am i who am i why should i even do what i am doing such a it's it's a jackpot you know people talk of hitting the jackpot of 500 million or whatever this is a jackpot every one of us has hit that we can never kind of you know go back text 9 is done text 10 <coughs> can you repeat after me utkramantam sthitam vaapi गुंजानम वा गुणान्वितम विमूढ़नानुपश्यन्ति पश्यन्ति ज्ञानचक्षुषः द फूलिश कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड हाउ अ लिविंग एंटिटी कैन क्विट हिज बॉडी nor can they understand what sort of body he enjoys under the spell of the modes of nature but one whose eyes are trained in knowledge can see all this <coughs> thank you so when you are reading bhagavad gita and doing bhakti shastri this is your roi return on investment we get some knowledge that you can actually see that how the living entities are transmigrating and how you know i am also one of that living entities and it's better to kind of you know be aware of that the idea is not to fill people with fear oh my god you have so much of negativity so much of discouragement so much always this this but the thing is this is the reality of material world and in fact the animals cannot perceive the, uh, the animals know that can, can be killed at any time but they still are thinking this is my domain and they uh, pass water around that place wherever it is to mark this is my domain that's a illusion so anyways yes venu gita mata ji oh yes please it's from yogesh prabhu he yes. says danvat pranam prabhu ji i have a question how about lord shiva is that post to as brahma and is there a lord shiva in each universe <coughs> so Lord Shiva is a post yes and Lord Shiva is there in each universe uh, but Lord Shiva is na- not the same as um, uh, as the jivas he is in the rudra tattva category so as much as there are jiva tattvas who occupy the post of brahma there is also rudra tattva category from which they can occupy the post of lord shiva in different universes because that means because it means like limited quantity additions are there right the oh innumerable vishnu tattvas innumerable jiva tattvas limited quantity shiva tattvas no they are also innumerable so <laughs> all right <coughs> text 11 yatanto yoginas chainam पश्यत्मस्थि पश्यत्मव सॉरी पश्यतात्मनवस्थि 
यतंतोप्यकृतात्मानो नैनं पश्यन्त्यचेतस द एंडवरिंग द एंडवरिंग ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट हु आर सिचुएटेड इन सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन कैन सी ऑल दिस क्लियरली बट दोज हुज माइंड आर नॉट डेवलप्ड एंड हु आर नॉट सिचुएटेड इन सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन कैन नॉट सी व्हाट इज टेकिंग प्लेस दो दे मे ट्राई सो यू कैन सी यू नो इफ यू डोंट हैव दिस नॉलेज इफ यू डोंट हैव द स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज you cannot understand you cannot fathom why is this change happening or how is this change happening so this is this is krishna's um, text 12 yada aditya gatam tejo jagat bhashayate khilam यच्चंद्रमसी यच्चाग्नौ तत्तेजो विधिमामकं द स्प्लेंडर ऑफ द सन व्हिच डिसअपियर डिसिपेट्स द डार्कनेस ऑफ ऑफ दिस होल वर्ल्ड कम्स फ्रॉम मी एंड द स्प्लेंडर ऑफ द मून एंड द स्प्लेंडर ऑफ द फायर आर आल्सो फॉर मी थैंक यू सो It's a nice purport. You know, can take some time. Text thirteen. Gama vishya chabhutani. Gama vishya chabhutani. Dharayam yahamo jasa. Pushnami chaushadhi sarvaha. सोमो भूत्मक ट्रांसलेशन आई एंटर इन टू ईच प्लैनेट एंड बाय माय एनर्जी दे स्टे इन ऑर्बिट आई बिकम द मून एंड देयर बाय सप्लाई द जूस ऑफ लाइफ टू ऑल वेजिटेबल्स सो यू नो आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी पीपल वेयर देयर यस्टरडे फॉर द सेमिनार ऑन वैदिक कॉस्मोलॉजी बट इट was mentioned that gravity doesn't exist and you know the scientists are kind of using that terminology to discredit the existence of god which exactly is krishna saying here that i enter into the orbits and you know because of me the think about it if everything happens by random how are the planets so perfectly going in in their orbit and not just like for like 10 seconds or 20 seconds or even one year or 10 years It's the billions of years perfectly in the same orbit there's no change no deviation the scientists are proud to say that if the earth moves closer to sun by 1 inch or 2 inch or whatever is the numbers i don't know will burn it'll become into a pile of ashes that's what they say so who is making sure that it's so perfectly going with no intelligence behind and they say this material world is gross matter means it's just inert matter dull dead matter and they can be no intelligence imbued in the matter but if that is the case then how the planets are able to go so perfectly and you know nobody and nobody they don't they are not afraid then i don't know this world is it's not, uh, imagine you are going on a train it's going nicely and then somebody says or even on the flight flight is even better let's put flight so you are going on flight all the way to india and then you know it's things are going on somebody announces in the loud speaker there is no pilot <laughs> there is no co pilot it's empty but don't worry you'll safely land in india and you'll go back to your sleep ah oh, it's okay you will be panicking all the time yes sir yes Oh, why don't the scientists say the same thing about this planet then it's going at such a solid pace going at such speed and it's apparently we seem to be nobody knows what is the height nobody knows how deep is the universe and supposedly we are spinning on like a plane and the scientists are saying you are okay where is the logic in that 
when krishna says these statements gama vishya chabutani that i am entering into the plan oh, okay thank you krishna you are there so we know that you are the pilot the planet is going to be okay till you say it is okay yes or yes am i speaking logically or illogically i am also scientist scientifically speaking right and then you know the plane analogy you know yeah there is no pilot there is no co-pilot i don't know when we will land we'll just keep flying you will be really panicking yes shivankar pro you had nothing okay i thought you had like good <laughs> yes avijit pro so um two things basically i'd like to comment on from the scientific world the scientists themselves say uh, which is uh, they say that you know there are four fundamental forces right basically that's what they say this which governs this whole universe right the gravitation electromagnetic then strong nuclear force and weak nuclear force they have been so far able to unite the electromagnetic force strong nuclear force and weak nuclear force they say like mm-hmm. same root but they have not yet been able to successfully unite with gravitation yeah, which sometimes they doubt that you know they does it even exist mm, mm. so that is <laughs> that is one the second mm. is uh there was an experiment that was conducted mm-hmm. uh, by scientists and uh, they kind of put lot of dials on a dashboard and each dial represented the one cosmological constant okay. so like you know charge mm. of mm. electron mm. mass of mm. electron like that you mm. know there is mm. gravitational constant mm. and when this and there was a simulation that was done mm. about the universe based mm. on that and when they slightly moved even like you know trillion trillion part of that thing it mm. changed one cosmological mm. constant the universe vanished Oh so they they are saying that how come these things are so precise mm. basically i mean it's i mean how can they say that it is all by chance but mm. then these things are so precise and, and so it's not interconnected impossible. yeah exactly and interconnected yeah and if one thing moves here and then it goes here <laughs> yeah. amazing so amazing. they contradict themselves actually <laughs> they say <laughs> there's a chance and then they you know they cannot explain the such precision in the universe excellent thank you thank you for sharing because you know if you if you want to reject god and the supremacy of god then you know the world is a mystery krishna he himself is saying that i am entering into the orbits and they stay because of my power and still the prabhupad writes in the purport and actually that if you take a fistful of sand or dust or a flower and if you hold it so as long as you hold it it's together but if you just let it go then everything is just scattered so similarly all these planets somehow krishna is holding it so they are perfectly in their orbit and they are not deviating as you said even everything is so precise and perfect and nothing changes because everybody is under the order of supreme lord that way there is no fight between planets too a sun is saying oh me a wind is saying me moon is saying no everybody is like okay god you whatever you said we'll do you know, the sun is saying that the moon is saying that the winds are saying that so everything is like arranged and that krishna is like supremely in control and then uh, next verse the famous verse <clears throat> aham vaishwanaro bhutva hari krishna Hare Krishna Vrindavan Priya Prabhu thank you for joining thank you prabhu i am i am watching online as you know um yeah sorry i am not there in person i just have a quick comment here can i make please it yes so so since you referred to the vedic cosmology yesterday thing uh, so here the verse is i enter into each planet and maintain it in orbit right so usually what we tend to think is that that's that's the case for earth also because we have this picture of earth going around the sun uh, right uh, can you repeat that vrindavan priya prabhu we couldn't clearly so, hear you so uh, here in this verse in the previous verse the man krishna says i enter into each planet and i keep it in orbit right right so we tend to think that that's the that's the case for earth also right 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 because we think of earth as like a sphere and, and it's, it's orbiting the sun like uh, the picture of the solar system that we have right 
Right, but actually, I mean, if if we go into the fifth canto, we see how the structure of Bhuma Mandala is, and how the different uh, other planets are in the orbits above Bhuma Mandala. Right, right. So just just a comment that. Um, so I think Krishna here is referring to all the other planets, including the sun. I see. I see. But Got Earth, it. Earth, according to cosmo, basic cosmology, Earth is not a globe and sphere. You know, hanging somewhere in the air is part of Bhu Mandala. So, just Go- that one comment I wanted to make. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for commenting. Thank you. Okay. Text 14. Aham Vaishwanaro Bhutva Praninam Dehamashritaha Prana Pana Samayukta Pachamyanam Chaturvidham Translation I am the fire of digestion in the bodies of all living entities, and I join with the air of life outgoing and incoming to digest the four kinds of food stuff here it's very intriguing so krishna is first saying i am the light of the sun and the moon so without which nothing can live or grow and then the second thing I, he's saying is that you know he is maintaining this structure the orbit of all the planets and he is controlling it and in the third and also in that he is saying that I also as moon provide the juice to the vegetables. And in the fourth he is saying not only I give you light, I give you vegetables which have the juice in them, but also I help you maintain the digestion. Now how much more can Krishna do? You know, he, if he is there to help you digest the food. Seriously, you think about it, I was fascinated. People eat but they never have a clue how it, the food is getting digested, how the food the energy is being released. Scientifically, people can give so many theories, don't get me wrong. But how it is getting digested and how it is being nourished. And here, the prashad actually is such a valuable thing because Krishna is the fire of digestion and it is our, when we eat, we are actually offering something into the digestion. We are doing a yajna. Krishna is a fire of digestion, we are doing swaha, that fire, by accepting food. So, if, 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 if we take prashad, then it becomes a very spiritual activity. The same activity that, you know, uh, eating can become really spiritual because we are offering, uh, you know, ingredients to the fire of Krishna. But if you eat on your own, Krishna is so merciful, he will still say, I will digest. But only to the extent I will, not to the extent you want. You know, th- there are these hot dog competitions. <laughs> I always think of it. I, I, Krishna, you are wonderful. You are, you know, helping them digest. I don't know how long they will suffer, but you know, eventually they will somehow get through. I, forget hot dog. Any food eating competition. I was like, I don't know why they are torturing Krishna like that and torturing themselves in the process. Krishna is not being tortured, it's only themselves being pro- tortured in that process. But uh, Krishna is merciful, he says, okay, whatever stuff you eat, I'll help you digest, but it's your responsibility. And so, because I said, if you don't offer food first, then you are eating only sin, I'll help you digest, well, your responsibility is not mine. So, if the very act of eating actually is, is kind of pleasing to Krishna or displeasing and then if you eat stuff that is not prescribed then you are just eating sin and it's anyways questions comments so we'll have five more six more verses we are doing great should we go okay let's go fast text 15 sarvasya chaham vishto Matta smritir jnana mapohanam cha Vedaischa sarvair ahameva vidyo 
ವೇದಾಂತಕೃದ್ವೇದವಿಚಾಹಂ I am seated in everyone's heart and from me comes remembrance knowledge and forgetfulness by all the vedas i am to be known indeed i am the compiler of the vedanta and i am the knower of the vedas thank you so here krishna is saying that um, you know b- b- based on how your desire is he'll give you remembers uh, remembrance accordingly if our desire is to remember krishna then he will reveal himself at the time of death if our you know so he, he is kind of helping and also the other thing is in every lifetime krishna is saying that you know you i erase your memory from past life you will have the subconscious impressions but not the distinct memories of past life because if there is no subconscious impression the reason you are looking puzzled is because i need that subconscious impressions to move from one body to next shotram chakshu sparshanam cha but the distinct impressions are not there the clear impressions on a very subconscious level that's why when the child is born they automatically like something they automatically don't like something they like to do something they don't they you know, all those impressions are there and they're just being manifest then they won't have memory of the previous life but on this there on the subconscious level text 16 yes avijit pro so prabhu uh, there are incidents where sometimes people do have memories from the past life mm. so are they is that is there something to do with how they died which causes them to have that or is it, what is what is the reason they have some memories from past life one thing we know from bhagavatam is uh, the story of maharaj bharat who became a deer and he had memory of past life and also gajendra who had memory of his past life or got the you know impressions from past life my understanding is that if you are very very deeply attached it's it's so deeply attached to that area or some some place or thing or events then krishna will give you that memory even though your time has come to pass away from that he'll let you keep the memories of the previous life um or if a person dies in a deep state of shock when when for example a person is killed by a person who is very close and you know it's such a state of shock on the consciousness that krishna keeps the memories but there is no specific reason or the bhagavatam doesn't give that very specific thing in certain such cases you will remember in previous life that is kind of i don't know there is written something like that is that helpful So how many people have read Vedanta sutras or no complete Vedantas you don't need to know these next three verses if you know you know the Vedanta sutras text 16 dva imau purushau loke kshras chakshraye vacha क्षरह सर्वाणि भूतानि कूटस्थो क्षर उच्यते ट्रांसलेशन देयर आर टू क्लासेस ऑफ बीइंग्स द फॉलोएबल एंड द इनफॉलोएबल इन द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड एवरी लिविंग एंटिटी इज फॉलोएबल एंड इन द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड एवरी लिविंग एंटिटी इज इनफॉलोएबल इट्स कॉल्ड इनफॉलोएबल सॉरी thank thank you so here uh, you know krishna is using the word kutastho in the fourth line he uses the word kutastho and shila prabhupad translates it as uh, in oneness so in spiritual world people are in oneness with krishna doesn't mean that they have lost their identity there is no ssn number in spiritual world there is an ssn number in spiritual world too but it is there they are one with krishna in in the uh, in in thought in his will text 
So how many classes of uh, souls or uh, living entities are there? Two. One is fallible and one is? Who is in the material world is? And the spiritual world? Okay. That's it, right? So spiritual world, Krishna is also there. So he is in the category of? Perhaps. We'll see. <laughs> Text 17. Uttama Purushastvanya Paramatme Tyudahrutaha Yo loka trayama visha Bibarta vyaya ishwaraha Besides uh, these two, there is the greatest living personality, the Supreme Soul, the imperishable Lord Himself, who has entered the three worlds and is maintaining them. So, I'll ask the same question again. There are two classes of beings who are fallible and then who are infallible. And those in the spiritual world are infallible. So, Krishna is in, is in the category of infallible because he is in the spiritual world. Yes or yes? Or yes or no? But here Krishna says, besides these two. It's infallible. So he is even beyond that. There is a third category of personalities who are beyond. And Krishna is saying, that is me. So, um, and then the, as Mataji said, there is this famous verse, Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam. It's Srila Prabhupada uses it time and again and again and again. And he uses it here. There are many eternals, but there is one supreme eternal. There are many controllers, there is one supreme controller. There is one. So when we, l l I don't want to use the lump, word lump, but when we categorize the jivas as fallible and infallible, we are still counting in the plural section. But Krishna, is singular. So he is above or he is beyond the fallible and infallible. Uttama Purushastvanya Paramatma He says, Be, besides these two, it's me. And then text 18. Yasmat Kshramati Toham. Okay, sorry. We'll wait for Venudhari Prabhu. Yes. In uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, <laughs> it's a different book, but uh, they are, um, uh, Mahaprabhu keeps on saying that, you know, Mayavadi Bhasu Sunle Hoy Sarbhutans. So, they are easy referring to the what is called Sariraka Bhashya, which is the Sankara interpretation of uh, Vedanta Sutra. Okay, you got me into it, so let's, let's discuss briefly about that. <clears throat> In a nutshell, the Mayavad theory say that Brahman is supreme and absolute. Brahman cannot have form, Brahman cannot have names. What we exist in this material world is a total illusion. God, when he comes into this material world, is also an illusion. God's names are illusion, God's forms are illusions, God's pastimes are illusions. Because they cannot comprehend and we are, we are that God. It's not we are one with God. It's not that we will become one with God. We are that God. So, when they cannot explain how we have come about from something that is, inf that is um, fallible and how I being a God can be covered by something that doesn't exist. Material world is illusory, means it's completely false. But I am God, I am covered by something false that doesn't exist. What is this material world? Is it real? Okay, according to Mayavadis, is this material world real or unreal? They said, you cannot describe. It's anirvachaniya, which means undescribable, you can't tell. Is it real or real? I don't know. 
I can't tell. It's beyond that. So my point here is nothing is satisfactorily explained. And when you hear that, your desire to serve Krishna in his personal form, which is the absolute truth, his flute, his uh, garland, you know, his transcendental lotus feet, they are supreme absolute truth, becomes an illusion. So that is something unbearable for us. How can the supreme being, whose beauty is so That is undescribable. You can't even give the, begin to even fathom that beauty of Krishna. That beauty which defeats millions of cupids, how can it be a product of illusion? When this whole world is so ugly and you know, it's just, the beauty is kind of rarely found in its true perfect form, but how can that be illusion then? You know, when Krishna comes, he exhibits that transcendental beauty, that's a product of illusion. That's where the problem comes. So, so Mayavad theory is that, you know, in a, in a very, it's, uh, it's, it's totally a bogus philosophy. And we know why it is bogus. The beauty is, it's not like, oh, something new. No, Vishnu told Krishna, Shankara, go in this Kali Yuga, you know, bewilder all the atheists with a really bogus philosophy. And then people fall for it. So what can we do? Is that helpful? But, you know, we can get started on this, but we'll never end. So let so, text 18. Yasmat Ksharamati Toham Aksharada Pichotamaha Atos Miloke Vedecha Pratitaha Purushotamaha Because I am the transcendental beyond both the fallible and the infallible and because I am the greatest, I am celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as that Supreme Person. So this is Krishna is saying that if you know these three verses, if somebody asks, do you know Vedanta? Yes, I know Vedanta. Vedanta says these three things. There are two categories of beings and then there is one person above that and that person is Krishna. That is Vedanta. Simple. These are three are the Vedantas. These are the nutshell of all Vedanta verses. So here is Krishna is saying, because I am beyond the transcendental, beyond both the fallible and infallible, I am transcendental and I am select I am celebrated as both in the Vedas and in this world. So in this world the Acharyas say the Vedas are Shruti, a Shabda Praman. And whatever is the um, histories, Puranas and other things. They are called Smriti. Smritis are quote-unquote wrote by man. As in like Vyasdev, because Vedas came from God, they are apaurusheya, beyond the material world. The Smritis are composed in this material world, though by exalted personalities. So Krishna is saying both in the Vedas, Shruti, and in the Smriti, I am celebrated as that Supreme Person. So, Bhagavatam points to the same Lord, the Vedas point to the same Lord. Text 19. <clears throat> Venudari Prabhu. Text 19, please. Yomam evam asamudho Janati purushottamam Sa sarva vid bhajati maam Sarva bhavena bharata Translation Whoever knows me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead without doubting is the knower of everything. He therefore engages himself in full devotional service to me, O son of Bharata. So, people say do you guys have any gyan? Do you read Vedas? Do you know Vedanta Sutras? Do you know all the intricacies? And then this should be our answer. Yomam eva masam mudo janati purushottamam sa sarva vid bhajati ma. He says that those who know me in truth and worship me and they know everything. And that is Krishna's words. I am not making this up. Right? 
he says that Vedadari Prabhu, Haribol, we are So he, he, here Krishna is saying that whoever knows me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead without doubting is the knower of everything. He therefore engages himself in full devotional service to me, O son of Bharata. So um, this is, um, can, can we not get distracted? Please. So, in the purport, um, let's look at the second paragraph. Vedic knowledge is called Shruti, learning by oral reception. One should actually receive the Vedic message from authorities like Krishna and his representatives. Here Krishna distinguishes everything very nicely and one should hear from this source. Simply to hear like hogs is not sufficient. One must be able to understand from the authorities. It is not that one should simply speculate academically. One should submissively hear the Bhagavad Gita from the living entities that are subordinate to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Anyone who is able to understand this according to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna knows the purpose of the Vedas. No one else knows the purpose of Vedas. The other point, when Srila Prabhupada writes that you can understand Bhagavad Gita from persons who are subordinate to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, when he wrote this Bhagavad Gita, it became so widely assimilated and people were able to understand what bhakti was and devotion was when in fact so many people had written you know you know Srila Prabhupada said, merely by academically if you try to read you can never understand the purpose of Bhagavad Gita and then it is mentioned here if you know Krishna then you know everything and in, in the practical proof is there that we read Bhagavad Gita then it's so easy to follow uh, the devotional service path to Krishna because we have taken shelter of Prabhupada in his teachings in, in, in the Bhagavad Gita. Text 20. And Krishna is giving really confidential stuff. Iti guhyatam am shastram idam uktam mayanagha Etad budva buddhiman syat Krita kritayas chabharata Translation This is a most confidential part of the Vedic scriptures, O sinless one, and it is disclosed now by me. Whoever understands this will become wise and his endeavors will know perfection. So here Krishna is saying that this is the most confidential part. So whatever is the Vedanta Sutra's verses, they are explained by Krishna and he is saying that if you know this without doubt and then if you know me, then you know every endeavor of yours is perfect. And um, this is so amazing that Krishna is giving this. And then we read the purport. Um, so I don't want to read the purport all over again. So any final questions or comments? Yes, Avijit Prabhu. So in, in 19 verse translation, uh, Sri Krishna is saying, whoever knows me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, without doubting. Mm. So, I think the purpose of all knowledge ultimately is to remove that doubt right. that say Krishna is the Supreme. Wonderful so, input, yes, so. yes. Because, you know, uh, Srila Prabhupada, you know, Saraswati was a very small girl um, who was the daughter of Alati Mataji, yes, thank you. And then she, who is Krishna? Krishna is the Supreme. She said that's a perfect preaching because it was not out of emotion he was saying, 
But he was quoting on this that whoever knows Krishna, he knows everything or she knows everything, even though she was a four year, four year old girl at that point of time. So we'll meet in two weeks' time from now. We'll do the 16th, the divine and the demoniac. <coughs> then, okay, thank you so much. Vacha kalpataru bhyascha kripa sindhu bhyayavaj.